Feel confused about the lack of connection between films? You're not the only one. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 sequels that were barely linked to the originals. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we will be looking at movies that left viewers puzzled as to why they were considered sequels, either due to a change in style, actors, plot, or by seemingly ignoring the original altogether. Movies such as Troll 2, which were never planned as direct sequels and had their title changed after the film was finished, will not be included here. Oh my god! Number 10, The Fast and the Furious, Tokyo Drift. Go! The third entry in this high-octane franchise is about as far removed from the original as Japan from the United States. Sure, Tokyo Drift features the fast cars and nitro-charged action the series is known for, but that's about it. Gone is the undercover agent angle of the previous entries, along with pretty much all the members of the original cast, barring a very brief Vin Diesel cameo at the end. While the Furious franchise did retroactively elevate the importance of Tokyo Drift in later sequels, at the time of its original release, it left fans of the series a little confused. Life's simple. You make choices and you don't look back. Number 9, Triple X, State of the Union. God bless America. An action franchise doesn't need to die when the star drops out. You just need a compelling fresh face and some solid talent behind the camera to keep the spirit of the series alive. James Bond has proven this beyond the shadow of a doubt, but then again, Xander Cage is no James Bond. And as proven by the sequel, Ice Cube is no Vin Diesel. Welcome to the first tank jacking in history. The campy fun and extreme sports angle of the original is all but lost in State of the Union, with the seemingly dead Xander Cage being replaced by an imprisoned ex-Navy SEAL officer, a box office bomb. State of the Union made Diesel's return a welcome one when the third installment finally arrived. I'm Triple X. Number 8, Grease 2. You must think I am some kind of dummy, huh? Actually, I think you're kind of terrific. Two years after the momentous romance of Danny and Sandy, the students of Rydell High can't stop falling in love, joining gangs, and breaking into song. Sadly, nobody cared anymore. Without the chemistry of John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John, this felt like little more than a random musical all too willing to capitalize on the success of Grease. I want a whole lot more than the boy next door, come on. A handful of catchy tunes and the return of Frenchie simply wasn't enough to raise this wannabe sequel to anywhere near the cult status of the original. It bombed, opening in fifth place at the box office and barely recouping its budget. What about the trophy for best score, Stephanie? I ain't no one's trophy goose. Number seven, Teen Wolf 2. I had fingernails the size of french fries. So? Teeth from here to Texas and she called me a dog. Another case of capitalizing on a successful film by changing focus to a new main character, Teen Wolf 2 is sadly missing all the charm and wit of the original supernatural teen comedy. This is mainly due to the absence of Mr. Charisma, Michael J. Fox, though Jason Bateman has since come into his own as a comedic actor on Arrested Development and in numerous successful films, in 1987, he just couldn't carry this flick. He does a decent job as Michael J. Fox's cousin, Todd, who also learns he's a werewolf, but without Scott, well, a second transformation wasn't welcome. Number 6, Ace Ventura Jr., Pet Detective. What? Ugh, we're betting some of you had never even heard of this one. Trust us, you were better off. Studios can recast and retool sequels all they want, but it's borderline insulting to Jim Carrey fans to try and revisit and mutilate one of his iconic roles. Granted, this is more of a children's spinoff, but the studio seemingly ignored the fact that children in 2009 did not grow up with Ace Ventura, and the original films were not very kid-friendly to begin with. Is there a veterinarian in the house? Because these are some sick puppies! Huh? Following the adventure of Ace Ventura's son as he tries to save his mother, Pet Detective Jr. is an over-the-top 90-minute Jim Carrey impression by a preteen. But right now, I've got bigger fish to fry. Number 5, Home Alone 3. Surprise! <sighs> What do you do when your star does not want to return for another sequel? Just recreate the first film's formula, erase any connection to the original films, and call it a sequel rather than what it really is, a reboot. Although John Hughes returned to write the third film in the franchise, the McAllister family is nowhere to be found. Instead, we follow a different young boy, left home alone and having to fend off criminals to protect his household. <laughs> The similarities are brutally obvious, and if it wasn't for the name changes and the motives of the criminals, you'd call this a remake. So in this case, it's both closely and barely related to the original. Ouch! Number four, Son of the Mask. Just give me the mask. 
I don't have it. Speaking of iconic Jim Carrey roles, this famously hated sequel decided to move even further away from the dark humor of the original Dark Horse The Mask comic books. It mistakenly went for a crude, kid-friendly romp that had absolutely no connection to the original 90s classic, apart from The Mask's mythology. That baby is born of The Mask, my mask. Now, where is it? With what could have been an amazing and endlessly inventive franchise, even without Jim Carrey, New Line Cinema dropped the ball and squandered its potential, irreparably damaging Jamie Kennedy's career in the process. That was flat out embarrassing. Number three, Book of Shadows, Blair Witch 2. Something happened to us in the woods. Something evil. The financial success of the Blair Witch Project pretty much guaranteed that audiences would be seeing a sequel in the near future. And sure enough, Artisan Entertainment rushed out a sequel the very next year. Many wondered how this found footage film could be turned into a sequel, and fans were rightfully worried. How many, wait, how many Heather Donahue's does it take to screw in a light bulb? Rather than continue the story from the original Blair Witch story, Book of Shadows follows fans of the original movie who decide to visit the Burkittsville Woods, only to unsurprisingly find out that the movie was more fact than fiction. The found footage style was also largely abandoned. Because hey, why not ditch what made the first film special? They should have never let you out. You're a long way from sane. Number two, Caddyshack 2. What? This sequel to the successful and hilarious Caddyshack was destined to be a disaster. Though a legitimate sequel was initially planned, everyone from lead Rodney Dangerfield to writer-director Harold Ramis started backing out mid-production. The film was rewritten, retailored, and cut together to follow new characters at the Bushwood Country Club, with only Chevy Chase reprising his role. Unsurprisingly, he later admitted that he regretted doing so. You want to settle this? Do it like gentlemen on the golf course. Unfortunately, the golfing sequel bombed, despite a strong new cast and the cult status of the original, earning it a number of Razzie nominations. Golf. Golf. Sounds like you got something stuck in your throat, then. Before we reveal our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. The material world will fade away, and only cyberspace will remain. I am successful, I'm powerful, I'm handsome, I'm happy. Successful, powerful, handsome. Emma! Oh! Get it out, son. Number one, Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. Halloween morning. Be a very busy day for me. The granddaddy of all confusing franchise entries, the very underrated season of The Witch, is often overlooked and hated on principle. Famously being the only Halloween film to not include masked killer Michael Myers, this third entry was meant to break the mold, as Michael Myers was never meant to be a recurring character. And I don't know what the hell is going on. After the immense success of Halloween and Halloween 2, the plan was to create a standalone anthology Halloween horror film to be released every October. Part 3 was clearly not the hit the studio expected, Meyer's popularity had been underestimated, and in future installments, he was once again put front and center. Enjoy the horror fun, Doctor. And don't forget to watch the big giveaway afterwards. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo, and subscribe for new videos every day.